Hey, welcome back to JMO Recording. I'm here with Darren Wiesner, the master guitar pedal builder, the boutique king of them all. And we're here to talk about guitar pedals today, boutique building, and some of his journey and pedals that he's built throughout the years. Let's get into it. What did you bring us today? He brought a ton of little surprises. Yeah, so I kind of went through my collection and found um, some pieces. And as I was digging through it, I thought to myself, wow, this has really been a journey of pedal building. Some of the things that kind of evolved personally in my, my skill set okay. as I started building. So, you know, the first entry. Ah, breadboards. Yeah, breadboards. Um, <laughs> so there are actually two different types of breadboards. There's what they call a Vero board, and it's basically point to point. Um, each pad is individually separated from it or isolated from its, its neighbor. And you make the connections by soldering the legs of the components after you fit them through. Mm. You know, there's a collection of uh, layouts um, available online. So you can basically spend a couple bucks, buy a handful of resistors, and uh, you can make a circuit that makes noises um, after you know a few attempts, because <laughs> um, it's pretty easy to make mistakes with something like this. And from there, I kind of got the itch. You basically put a, a negative mask on it, and then you etch it with a copper chloride and that removes all of the, uh, the, the copper from the boards. Wow. And it, you get traces and you can kind of solder your components on. Yeah. And then from there, you know. What, what is that pedal? I think it's the, the Keeley Doubler. It's a version of it. Basically, it's like a, a very short delay. Shorter than a slapback. Exactly. To create like a yeah. tight chorus. Yeah. Exactly. He came out of nowhere. I, he was like. Compressors. Uh, yeah, he was modding compressors the and the compressors. tube screamers. The tube screamers. And then all of a sudden, he's. He had like a factory. Yeah. He went from his garage to uh, kind of the JAX story. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. From there, they went to manufactured circuit boards that again, I didn't design for myself. And then also taking the instructions that allow you to lay out the, the buttons and knobs on the pedal. So um, what is this? So then I wanted to get a little bit more artistic with it, a little bit more boutique-ish, and found a guy that was selling some old cigar boxes. I figured this would be kind of a cool thing to make like a small, simple point-to-point -point buzz circuit. These are little prefab boards. Um, they have you know, the, the connections already pressed in place on the board. Look at that old cloth wiring. Where did you even get that? There are actually some pretty cool DIY stores hmm. that sell all kinds of, so of niche. Cool. Components in the board. Oh, and there's Probably. your germanium yep. transistors. Yep. Transistors. This is a little, I think, a little fuzz face. Sorry. Yeah, I can tell just by looking at it. <laughs> yeah, small. <laughs> We've seen it so many times. Yeah. You've opened up a fuzz. There's not much going on inside, <laughs> but that's what you see. Exactly. <laughs> you know, just a couple knobs. The one thing with a, a wooden enclosure like this in fuzz circuits is you have to create a Faraday cage to prevent mm. a lot of the noise. To basically, put tin foil on the inside of here, like adhesive foil, and that. Kind of cuts down on, on some of the noise. The next step in my journey was to actually start designing my own circuit boards. At the time I was living in a small apartment, so it was hard to kind of keep my living space separate from my work area. So that's when I started designing these really small circuits. So here is a small circuit board that I designed using a, a design software called Eagle. Um, and one of the things that's, there's a couple of things that are unique about this. First of all, you tell a very small circuit, so there's a lot of components packed on to a very small wow. space. The other thing is it's two-sided and there are surface mount devices that I apply by hand to both sides and that allows you to really pack your circuit in tight. One of the things that helps you with eliminating the bad types of noise in a circuit is to make your traces as short as possible mm -hmm. and as direct as possible with minimum overlap and crosstalk. It was part of the, the process. I standardized uh. I standardized the um, the controls on these things so they all fit kind of the same. This is where Darren's brilliance really shines. Uh, is this one of your modular? Okay, it is. so explain to everybody exactly what this is because I have been playing guitar for 30 years. I've never heard of anything like this. And when I heard of this design, idea, I said to myself, why why isn't everybody doing this? So explain what you've come up with here. You know, when you have small circuits like this, you can fit quite a few of them, you know, three or more into one small enclosure. It just kind of made sense to me to design an enclosure that allows you to quickly swap these these things in and out, and you can arrange them in different orders. So you can wow. kind of 
um, you know, have a boost into a drive if you want it that way or go the opposite. Have you heard of the cord micro bits? It's like magnetic pieces that snap together. This is really similar. It's modular guitar pedal synthesis, essentially. And your 200 circuits, are those clones of popular pedals? Yep. They're almost all clones. Almost all pedals will eventually have a published schematic either from the manufacturer or it's really common for DIY pedal builders to trace circuits. And then once they've traced those circuits, they make the schematics be really So if, if someone wanted to order a, uh, a pedal with a Klon, a Holy Grail, and a Tube Screamer in one little box, you could just make that. Yeah. And they could just unplug it and put them in different orders, and it's all in one little pedal. Exactly. Wow, incredible. Why don't more people do this? I'm not sure. You, although you did tell me someone has done it, but it's not as easy to use as yours. Yeah, there are... Um, like little game cartridges that that's um, right so Debbie ever released a, a concept pedal i don't that's think she right. ever brought it to production um it had like little game uh cartridges that you could swap in and out um for whatever reason that never really caught on either but his is great because even the back is magnetic so it literally just pops off you don't even have to unscrew it do you have yeah, uh, one of them i can show you right yeah now. let's show everybody this build it's yeah. absolutely genius so this is the multi-pedal here the modular multi-pedal Wow. Um, really, the design kind of follows the same thing. You have three controls that are arranged in you know, some, similar spacing. It can be a switch, it can be two knobs, it can be three knobs, three switches. It doesn't really matter, they're all spaced evenly. Um, and then on the inside, as Josh was just mentioning, we ha I have some uh, magnetic. Those are like um, neodymium or whatever? Yeah, yep. Um, Super strong. Strong earth magnets. Yeah. Um, He's a scientist. His day job is he's, he's like Milo from The Descendants. <laughs> um, and then on the inside here, we have a couple different circuits. So each one of these circuits has three controls mm -hmm. in the same position. So no exactly. matter which one you choose, like you said, if it's two switches and one potentiometer or whatever, mm -hmm. it'll fit into that enclosure. Exactly. Wow, yep. that's so brilliant. You've thought of everything. We also have some soft touch um, switches here that have, I think it's like a five millisecond sound deadening to eliminate pop with um, that can happen on circuits. Oh, that's um, brilliant. So, yeah, this is a labor of love. This chest over here, randomly grabbing one of, I think there's 64 racks in here. Um, and each one of these has, you know, four or five of these little circuits that I've designed. Wow. Um, there's like over 200 of these things. So one pot, two toggles. Mm -hmm. And this one, the next one is just two pots. Yep. And so what would happen to the third hole? You can put a plug in there. Would have, you'd I have, have a little plug. rubber plugs that you can put in there. Brilliant. And then so three pots. Three. And you've even had these etched with the name of what it is. Yep. So each one should have a some type of name that identifies what this is. Cot 50. 50. Cot 50, wow. Silver Fox a... Octavator. Octover. Silver Fox, I haven't... Wait, that's familiar. Oh, I'm thinking of Fox pedals. Yeah, the GT Overdrive. <laughs> My eyesight is bad. You know, kind of the classic control arrangement for any type of dirt pedal will have like the output in the upper left, I believe. It'll have a tone in the middle, mm. and then your um, kind of drive in the upper right. You may have those switched around, but almost all of them have the same arrangement. And there's actually a really simple explanation for why that is that isn't obvious. And that's because of how the schematic is arranged. So on the input, the first control that comes off of the input is gonna be your distortion. It's kind of what modulates whether it's you know your op amp or the transistor, whatever is kind of overdriving the circuit, mm. is gonna be the first control. The next control is gonna be the tone control. All the way at the end of the circuit, you have your output. And of that's course, why it's gonna yeah. be on the output side of the, the pedal. Mm. I've never noticed that all yeah. pedals pretty much follow that yeah. traditional it's, practice. It's because of the schematic. The like, electrons flow through the circuit. Mm. It's pretty cool. What's um, your What's your favorite distortion pedal of all time? Oh, um, I know it's depending on what genre you're playing that day, but just yeah. the overall. The Boss DS2. Yeah? Yeah, for sentimental reasons. Um, it was my first distortion pedal. Um, also, I really like that kind of nasally mm. distortion in mode two. It just, I don't know, there's not really anything else like it. And it's mm. actually a surprisingly complicated circuit to the mm. extent that 
there is nothing available on the DIY market. So it'd be easy for you to corner that. <laughs> Mine is uh, the crunch box. Uh, Moore makes the cruncher for like 40 bucks mm -hmm. and it blows away like these $500 boutique distortion nice. pedals. Incredible. I love, uh, there's a, Brook there's a company in Brooklyn called Balls and they have one called the Big Balls. Yeah, it's kind of a stupid name, but it's the Big Balls. This is my favorite fuzz pedal. You mentioned New York builders. Um, there is a guy who's a musician um, builds DIY, happens occasionally, um, who owns a company called Small Sound Big Sound. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah, I had his um, Heavy as Fudge or something. He also has Fuck Overdrive. That's the one I had. Yeah. yeah. There was an F in there somewhere. Yeah. And I think and it was, he uses like a stamp. To, yeah. to it's like an ink stamp that he just stamps the metal enclosures. No silk yeah. screen, nothing fancy. No. But I remember when I sold that pedal on Reverb, I got like four hundred dollars for it. Like yeah. people are gaga for that pedal. Yeah, it's it's yeah. super sought after boutique pedals. Um, I didn't know he was in New York. Yeah. So what else did you bring us? Yeah. So this is kind of my latest project. Um, what the so what? This is <laughs> a giant PCB. And it's not actually a pedal at all. It's a circuit board for a guitar amplifier. Oh, okay. So I had a old Fender Hot Rod DeVille that burned out one of Trace because the PCBs from Fender are garbage in those amps. Mm. Um, it was just kind of sitting around collecting dust. And I was like, maybe I could turn this into something that would be a lot cooler. And in true DIY fashion, you can own things that would be unaffordable if you didn't build them yourself. So this is actually a Dumble. Wow! Yeah. Right. So that'll that'll save him 150 grand. Right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who made the circuit? Um, a a guy from Europe. Um, it's Luigi is his name. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Let's see what it says here. Copyright 2019. Luigi Retro Customs in association with Monkey Matic. Yeah. Huh. And this is a Dumble circuit. It is a Dumble circuit. Now, I've only usually seen these green terminals as power terminals. What are all these? So that will allow me to install the circuit board and then install the controls and fit oh, the wires just... direct to fit. Okay. Yeah, it just makes for a much cleaner installation. Wow, so you're building a Dumble. Building a Dumble. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I just brought a collection of pedals that I think are just kind of neat and different. Why don't you show us the frog pedal here? This is yeah. one of my favorites. I've bought a couple of these off of him. All right, so we got a frog Gorgeous. pedal here. So it's an Alembic 2A. Yeah, it's, it's uh, based off the old Fender Showman. Um, so a company out of California, Alembic, uh, made this in kind of a preamp format. Um, and several years later, when these things became kind of unobtainable, um, a DIY guy made a circuit board for it, like retraced the circuit, made a circuit board for it, um, and made this pedal available. Um, one of the things that you know I think is kind of unique about this is a lot of the um, pedals that have just tubes in them are kind of starved plate. Um, basically, it's like nine volt, and it stays nine volt throughout the entire circuit, and basically uses the tube like a diode. Here, it actually uses the tube like a, a an amplifier, a guitar amplifier. We use the tube. Mm. It pumps 200 volts, so it cranks up at nine volt DC pumps it up to 200 volts and runs that through the tube. Right. What's the legality about tracing a circuit? It's considered art. So um, even it, if it's an in-production pedal, exactly. a new, brand new MXR Echoplex, yep. you trace it and put it out, that's okay. Yep. So as long as it isn't an exact replica of the schematic, if oh. you, can, you can change the symbol on the schematic. Oh. Yeah, there's absolutely no copyright protection for schematics. I guess that's a good thing and a bad thing. Yeah. If I was MXR, that's a bad thing. But right. If I was Darren, that's a great thing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's where you get into things like um, the old clones were gooped. That's right. Because right. they put a huge amount of time and effort. Um, it was actually engineers. Some, at least one of them was a scientist, I believe, hmm. um, that designed that pedal. And they wanted to protect their investment, so they gooped it. Hmm. Um, he has a good sense of humor if you've seen the follow-up pedal, the all red one that came out like eight years ago, it says, it's just all red and in white letters, it says, I have nothing to do with the absurd <laughs> hype behind the clown pedals. And that's what's on the face of that pedal. Yeah, if you're a pedal guy and watching this, you already knew that, but I thought that was hilarious. I can't believe that you can just trace a circuit and yeah. steal it. Well, yeah, this is a great pedal. Um, so what else did you bring us? All right, so I've got a couple odd, odd pedals. 
So this is a clone of a Ludwig Phase II. Hmm. So this is an old school synthesizer. The original pedal also had a foot control built into it. And rather than having a separate oh. box, I kind of took that control, mounted it on the side here, and put a large wheel so that you can carefully kind of use your foot. That's brilliant. Um, so That's so cool. Like um, the Shin E, the old Shin E stuff. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Another pedal, um, so this is a Love Tone Doppelganger. Um, they're you know, a pedal or a company that I think has, has since gone out of business. Um, like many of these companies, mm. um, the pedals get popular out of nowhere and then they become like, exceedingly expensive. Mm. Flame maple veneer on the That's top. real wood? That's real wood. <laughs> um, one of the things that I didn't um, anticipate when I built this is that it would warp if it was not protected. So I applied a pretty thick epoxy over the surface of it. Beautiful. And you know, the epoxy is probably a, couple, a millimeter or two thick. What's cooler than a phaser pedal too, right? I love phasers. I mean, yeah. you know, a distortion pedal, overdrive, you're just listening to different variances you've heard of what you've heard, but a, fa a good phaser pedal, oh my goodness. Right, I'm a sucker for OTA phases. So mm. like the old Ross phaser. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. And then I got here another love tone pedal. Um, this is the flanger with no name. Um, oh, so cool. you got to send the circuit out a variety of ways. It has an effects loop built into it, distortion or anything into the phaser. Um, and then you can wow. split the signal to multiple speakers. Well, Darren, thanks for coming and showing us all your cool toys. And we'll have Darren back hopefully as he creates more cool stuff. When you make that tumble, please do bring it oh, in. Are you sure. going to put it in a Tolex box and make it beautiful? I'm going to put it actually in the old Hot Rod Bell box because it, it's cool. designed to basically insert exactly where the old circuit board came out of it. Cool. Well, thanks for coming and showing us thanks your cool me. stuff. Uh, again, Darren and Josh, you, you've been watching JML Studios. Check out our next video coming up all about synthesis. Yeah.